Good evening, and you're very welcome as you join us once again for a time of nightly online prayer in this season of Lent, where we're going to read and reflect on a psalm together, and out of that pray for God's blessing on our community and our world. Tonight we're going to be reading Psalm 53. So if you have a Bible or a Bible app, you may want to get that open now. To begin with, we're going to light a candle. And if you have a candle at home, you can light yours at the same time as I do here. We light this candle as a symbol of light in the darkness, of Jesus, the light of the world, and our living hope, a visible reminder to us that he, by his Holy Spirit, is present with us now. As I enter prayer now, I pause to be still, to breathe slowly, to recenter my scattered and anxious thoughts upon the presence of God. Dear Lord, as I offer myself to you tonight and throughout this season of Lent, help me to turn away from my own small, self-centered view of the world and to see your view of me and your world. I invite you to reshape my soul and ask you to help me respond to the world and people around me with your compassion. Amen. Now, if you have your Bible or your Bible app, then uh, turn to Psalm 53 with me uh, now and uh, let's keep an eye on it uh, before we read it together. I used to be an atheist and I dismissed belief in God. I believed that the idea of God could be explained by ancient primitive peoples encountering and deifying extraterrestrial beings who landed on Earth thousands of years ago. I was pretty zealous uh, about my theory and derided my mother's and others' Christian faith as naive. But then I met God. Or should I say he met me? Maybe it's a bit of both. It was in a difficult and turbulent time uh, as a young man after I'd left home. Although I most definitely wasn't looking for them, I kept encountering Christians whose lives were attractively down to earth, but somehow different, who talked of God as, as if they knew him personally. And annoyingly, some of them offered to pray for me. As I had nothing to lose, I decided to try one of those, well, okay, God, if you are real, please come and show yourself to me and change my life kind of prayers. And it wasn't overnight, but I can tell you he did just that. He's still in the process of healing and improving me today, praise him. And you know, once you see God, once you actually meet him, you can't unsee him or unknow him because he is. But until you do, until you see and know him, it's not so hard to say there is no God. In the generation in which David lived, who again is the author of tonight's psalm, it was no different because human beings, despite uh, our technology, are no different in every generation. As David muses about the population around him in 900 BC, over 2,900 years later, we all know people who dismissively say, as David comments in his opening lines, there is no God. Maybe it used to be us. Maybe 
it's our children or our spouse or our parents or our friends. They don't know that they're being foolish. I certainly didn't until I did. And the reality is, as David observes, and if we remember back to Psalm 51, I'm sure he includes himself uh, in this statement, there is no one who does good, not even one. Or as the Apostle Paul puts it in the New Testament, all have sinned and fallen short. You see, the truth is we're all in the same messy boat. We all want to do good, and to do the right thing in life. But it's true, isn't it, that so often we find ourselves doing the wrong thing and we can't see a way off of the treadmill of trying and failing to improve ourselves. The good news is that God doesn't give up on us. As David puts it, God looks down from heaven to see if there are any who understand, any who seek God. That line puts me in mind of Jesus' story of the father of the lost or prodigal son who constantly scans the horizon every day, looking for and longing for his son's return home. God is constantly looking for those who would respond to him. Now, in the midst of this dilemma of human beings, for the most part living in ignorance of the God who made them and his longing for them to seek him, we might want to uh, say, what, what is the answer? David looks in hope for a saviour. He, he says in verse 6, is there anyone around to save Israel, as the message translation puts it? His longing was, of course, fulfilled in Jesus. In contrast to our lack of pure goodness, Jesus was unique in his complete human goodness. Now, you may not realise it, but the Apostle Paul quotes from this psalm that we're reading tonight to show the need of every human being for a saviour in Romans chapter 3. Like David did a thousand years before him, Paul examines different people around him uh, in the world, Jew and Gentile, moral and immoral. And he comes to the conclusion that there is no one who God can classify as good and righteous. He writes, therefore, no one will be declared righteous in God's sight, in verse 20. But the wonder of, of the gospel and God's amazing, tenacious love is that we who are not righteous can be declared righteous through Jesus's perfect righteousness. As Paul puts it, this righteousness from God comes through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. Jesus alone makes it possible for what is broken in us to be fixed. But how do we get to that point? Especially if we're living in ignorance of all of these things, naively but confidently asserting that there is no God. As someone who was once there myself, um, I think it's not just because uh, there were Christians who were courageous enough to share the need for me to explore these things, but also because there were people praying for me that that might happen. It was a long time later that I discovered that during my years of rejection of belief in God, my mother was secretly uh, not only regularly praying for my salvation herself, but small groups of her friends from her church, small groups of her friends from her church were praying for me along with her too. Now I think this would be a good point for us to stop and read tonight's psalm and then for us to pray specifically for all those we know who naively but foolishly say there is no God. Psalm 
The fool says in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt and their ways are vile. There is no one who does good. God looks down from heaven on all mankind to see if there are any who understand, any who seek God. Everyone has turned away. All have become corrupt. There is no one who does good, not even one. Do all these evildoers know nothing? They devour my people as though eating bread. They never call on God. But there they are, overwhelmed with dread, where there was nothing to dread. God scattered the bones of those who attacked you. You put them to shame, for God despised them. Oh, that salvation for Israel would come out of Zion. When God restores his people, let Jacob rejoice and Israel be glad. Let's pray. Lord, when I look at our nation and our community and the hurt around us that this COVID pandemic and the ongoing restrictions on our lives is causing, I weep. And especially for those I know who, like us, experience the same deprivations of liberty and social contact, and yet do that without the comfort of knowing you, the God who made them and loves them and has so many good things to give them. Lord, thank you that now it is possible for me to have righteousness from God, to be made right with God and that this incredible, undeserved gift comes through faith in Jesus to all who believe because of what he did for us on the cross. Thank you for the joy and freedom that that gives me in facing the challenges of life. Loving Lord, I cannot change the hearts of those who do not know you. The offer of a loving relationship cannot be coerced. It needs to be seen and freely responded to. So tonight I would pray for those I love who do not yet know you, who cannot yet see you because they have not yet looked for you. Lord, thank you that you are ever looking for us, scanning the horizon in the hope that we would look for you. As our eyes are closed in a moment of silence, I ask you to bring to mind the name of at least one person whom you would love for them to share your personal experience of God for themselves as well. Maybe this person is someone you've prayed for often. Maybe this person that comes to mind is someone you've never prayed for before. I invite you to think of their name now. Father of many lost sons and daughters, we pray tonight for, we pray for them to be inspired again to seek you, to find you, to know you. If we are the only Christian they know, give us the courage and the right words of encouragement to prompt their seeking. If we are not, or if they can no longer hear us because we have spoken poorly or they have shut their ears to us, then we pray that in the coming days from tonight you would bring other followers of Jesus around them through their workplace, through their social network, through unexpected encounters, people whose Jesus-filled words and lives will find a way in. And we would pray for those who did once know you, but whose love for you has grown cold 
and have wandered away. We pray tonight for their rescue and return to safety in your loving arms. We finish this time of prayer uh, together as we say uh, these words on the screen. O High King of Heaven, have mercy on our land. Revive your church. Send your Holy Spirit for the sake of the lost, the least and the broken. May your kingdom come to our nation. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you for joining us tonight. Please tell your friends about this opportunity for evening prayer and tune in again at 7pm on Monday night when Michael will take us through Psalm 54. And don't forget to join us before that on Sunday morning at 11am on our YouTube channel for our Sunday service. For now, until we meet again, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Amen.